Hello fellow YouTubers and subscribers to my YouTube channel, Square Wave 2. Yes, I am Square Wave 2, also known as Vacuum Tube Man, and this is my shop assistant, Mr. Dillon. He's a very good worker, very punctual, and certainly keeps the mouse population down here in the shop. I love vacuum tubes. Just about every project I undertake involves vacuum tubes in one way or another. I'm especially fond of the old vacuum tube shortwave radios, the ones we affectionately call boat anchors, ones made by Helicrafters, Hammerland, National, and others. I'm also a collector of vintage test equipment. I snap it up, I buy it wherever I find it, at swap meets or garage sales. And that brings me to the topic of today's video, something I found at a swap meet in Woodland Hills at uh, Pierce Junior College here in the San Fernando Valley. I was at the Pierce swap meet a month ago and I came across a really unique, very interesting item, something I have never seen before. It's a tube instrument, but it's something I've never come across, I've never seen, and perhaps you have never seen one either. I was walking along between the aisles at the swap meet and my foot happened to bump into what appeared to be a large wooden box made from very heavy gauge, half-inch plywood, screwed together, but appeared to be very old, weather-beaten, scratched, bent corners. It's really been around a while. Now, usually when you see a box at a swap meet, it's just a box. It's an empty box, not worth opening, not even worth picking up. However, something about this box intrigued me. I tried to pick it up, and it was so heavy I couldn't move it. It was extremely heavy. So I looked around, started examining it to closer and closer, and I found some snap hooks or catches around the bottom of the box, which gave me the idea that if I unhooked these, a lid would lift off, a top would come off. And sure enough, I unhooked them, I lifted off the top, and I got quite a surprise. I'm going to take the top off for you now. Well, here it is, folks, a cloth and brangle beep frequency oscillator. I had never heard of cloth and brangle before, but I later found out they were a Chicago-based company founded in 1932, and they specialized in test equipment. The frequency range of this oscillator is 50 cycles per second up to 32,000 cycles per second, so, of course, it's an audio oscillator. Calling the unit a beat frequency oscillator, which it says here on the front panel, beat frequency oscillator, is kind of unusual. I thought all test oscillators worked on the beat frequency or heterodyning principle. Down here we have a little typewritten notice, very ancient, hard to read, but it says calibration easily damaged by rough use a pointer knob. Here's the pointer knob, and I do not intend to give it any rough use. Over here we have an electric eye. This knob is labeled zero adjustment. Over here we have controls for attenuation to control the output level. Down here we have a variety of output jacks. This is the ground connection. Over here, built-in fuse, on-off switch, and the uh, cloth and brindle nameplate down here. Turning the unit around, you can see a very heavy-duty protective cover on the back. This cover is actually made out of heavy gauge steel. I've taken a few screws out so I can remove the cover and we can see what's inside. Inside you can see that we have nine tubes. Over here we have two 6SN7s. Back here we have a pair of 6J5s. Down here we have a pair of 6SJ7s. Here we have our OD3 voltage regulator. Here is our 6X5 rectifier. And back here that you can't see is our electric eye tube. Why an audio oscillator needs nine tubes with a regulated power supply and an electric eye tube is really a mystery to me. Over here we have a very heavy power transformer. We have a couple chokes on top and a couple chokes under the chassis. 
And here are two very strange components in these black cans. I can't really identify them. They're not transformers, they're not capacitors, they're not resistors. Perhaps they are well-shielded coils. I really can't say for sure. I'm always fascinated by the history of these old tube devices, test equipment, and radios. When were they originally manufactured? When were they sold? How many owners did they have? And this particular piece of equipment is no exception. I talked to the vendor who sold it to me at the Pierce Swap Meet, asked him where he got it, what he could tell me about it, and he said he bought it at an estate sale of a deceased man who used to be an employee of Lytton Industries. Lytton Industries was an industrial military manufacturer. They made a communication and navigation equipment for wartime purposes. They were originally started in 1953. And of course, this information really piqued my interest and made this particular device even more interesting. I wonder, perhaps, was this device used by engineers at Lytton Industries? Was it perhaps retired one day and taken home by an employee who wanted to use it for his own purposes, who built a nice wooden box, wooden case to store it in to protect it and to make it semi-portable? And I do say semi-portable because in its case, this device weighs close to 40 pounds, which is not very portable. I'm going to sign off today with a little political commentary, which is something I rarely do. If you believe, as I do, that global warming is a complete farce, and if you believe, as I do, that hard-working coal miners should not be put out of work to save the environment, and if you believe, as I do, that every adult man and woman in this country should be armed at all times, should carry a weapon, then please, for God's sake, vote Republican. Always vote Republican. You'll be glad you did. And if you haven't picked up your assault weapon yet, your assault rifle, you better do so quickly while you still have a chance. Now you may ask, why do I need an assault rifle? Well, the answer is simple. It is your constitutional right to own firearms, and the assault rifle is just another firearm. <laughs> okay, folks, there's nothing wrong with putting a little humor into my videos, is there? Well, that's all I have for now. Dylan and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time.